Getaway Artist, Shinobu's Vow, Heart of Inmost Light. All exotics that either received a change or got propelled higher in the meta because of the outside sandbox changing around them. But despite this, there are many, many exotics that are boring or have become obsolete. Today we're going to discuss some exotic armor pieces that need updates to their overall design. This can be because of a general lack of power to use them or because their purpose they served has been filled by 3.0 reworks or the like. One thing that may be a tad odd for this video as opposed to ones we've done in the past is we are not going to cover exotics that could be simply buffed linearly. In other words, exotics like Mask of the Quiet One, Geomag Stabilizers, Lucky Raspberry, and so on won't appear on this list because they could be good if what they did was just made stronger, like more ability energy from Mask of the Quiet One, even longer durations with Geomags, you get the picture. But before we get going, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke offers monthly boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands and it's free to join. Bespoke is awesome because they source 90% of their high quality products from small businesses, of which many are located right here in the US. Based on a preference quiz that you fill out, Bespoke introduces their members to cool new products like outdoor gear, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and much, much more. And the best part is that each product is valued around $70, but will only cost you $49. And before anything is even shipped, you get to decide if you want to get the box or swap it for a different one entirely or just skip the month free of charge. This is the third time I have been sponsored by Bespoke and there is a reason for that. Their products are top notch. Every single time I've gotten a box from them, it has always exceeded my expectations, whether it be yet again another round of the Scorch package for our hot sauce needs, the HO package to boost our Taco Tuesdays to top tier, or the Survivor Knife, which I, it's going to hurt me a little bit, but this is probably going to be a really nice Christmas present. To get 20% off your first box. Click the link in the description and enter code TDT20 at checkout or go to www.bespokepost.com slash TDT20. As a perfect example of something that I'm hoping to address in this video, Astrocyte Verse. This is my baby, my go-to exotic, my number one, and my favorite exotic, but I can't help but notice that this exotic feels just a little bit out of date with Blink being better now. And not only that, Blink is still kind of unusable in PvE unless you're a jokester, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But why not give this exotic just a little bit more usability in the PvE space so that it can still keep pace with the Blink buffs that we ended up getting? A simple change I'd like to see for this is that this exotic will partially reload your weapons when you Blink after getting a kill. This could open up some really interesting play styles where you could do something like fire a grenade into a crowd of enemies, Blink, and then you've got that ammo back so that you can go again. It actually makes Blink into a weapon which i think is pretty damn cool next up on our list is the eternal warrior often it's better just to use thunder crash in pve and at that point curious of the falling star is just gonna be the place that you go to if you want overshield on your thunder striking titan and this is almost entirely pointless in pvp because you're pretty hard to kill anyway that overshield just not really gonna do a whole lot for you one change that we could do is just to allow this to grant overshield to all supers another idea just completely to change this exotic altogether is to allow this exotic to grant barricade energy whenever your barricade takes damage. This would allow the Titan not only to play into the idea of an eternal warrior like the name implies, but it also grants it some really high usability in the higher end PvE activities while still being viable in PvP. In PvP, we could make the barricade glow maybe some type of yellow so that the enemies know that this is not something that they should be shooting in the same way, it gives them that clear indication. You probably saw this next exotic coming. This is Apotheosis Veil. Apotheosis Veil is a relic from Destiny 1 and it has really never really had a spot in the game. It frankly is confusing that this exotic has lived as long as it has without any types of changes. Health and ability energy upon casting super and a passive increase to class ability recharge is almost unnoticeable to the point that when I was using this exotic, I almost couldn't tell that I was using this exotic. So let's entirely change the functionality and I have two ideas. First idea, multi kills generate orbs of light while you are standing inside your rift and orbs of light you generate grant more super energy. This still allows this exotic to be a support type exotic, which this is clearly going for, but it allows it to have better flavor. And in particular, I think this would be really cool with something like Wave Splitter. The synergy is just baked in. Another completely different idea is to copy what we have in the Crest of Alpha Lupi, which is that you can generate more orbs whenever you get kills with your super or cast your super in general. 
I think that's a really easy, kind of a lame pick to go with it, but definitely more user friendly than what we have right now. Spo Tracers is a very valuable pick in PvP for certain play styles, but the bonus damage that you are supposedly supposed to be getting feels like a lie. It does work, and this is mostly noticeable in PvE, but in PvP, this will basically never happen, which might be a good thing because that could definitely open up some damage numbers for some weapons killing when they shouldn't be, but even then, it still seems like a slap in the face. Another interesting thing I found when taking these out for a spin is that you can target gunpowder gamble grenades, which has implications that I am not qualified to answer. I have two completely different ideas for this. Number one is a kind of a two-parter. Immediately mark all nearby targets when you cast your super when wearing this exotic, as well as allow shots on marked targets to pierce barriers and allow you to deal with anti-barrier champions a little bit easier. I hate champions and any means that we can get to better deal with them is an okay go in my book. Another idea, which is a little bit more subtle, is to allow the foe tracer marks that you get to also be visible to all allies, making the information that you receive a little bit more user-friendly. Coming up, we have controversive holds. Controversive holds have a unique mechanic that unfortunately cannot scale too well without being overpowered. As we've seen in the past, generating too much grenade energy makes these way too strong, but they're still outclassed by things like Nezerak Sin, Eye of Another World, and Verity's Brow, which are much more passive in your ability to get grenade energy while often having better overall results. An idea for this is to increase the damage that the overcharged grenades do, making these a little bit more valuable as a DPS tool and allow these to also deal with unstoppable champions whenever you're using a void grenade. The other option for this is to go in the more tanking direction, which is to increase the hold duration that you have on your grenades. And if you hold a grenade charge for an extended period of time, it will project a field of energy that guards and drains nearby enemies, similar to how blocking with a ruinous effigy orb would work. Now let's talk about sealed Akamkar's grasps. Unfortunately for these exotics, Whisper of Impetus on Stasis exists, which is a much cheaper way of getting this type of effect to proc. It does have some interesting glaive synergy that was baked into it, but ultimately still not quite worth it outside of some really niche and often buggy circumstances. By the way, did you know that these exotics grant air born effectiveness after a melee? Me neither. So, shout out to Eggnog and our Discord who had an idea of allowing melees when you're at a full magazine to overflow the magazine of non-single shot weapons. So things that aren't bows or grenade launchers of the like. So, you know, we don't have anything breaking there. We're coming into the home stretch here. Next, we have Kepri Sting, a really cool exotic for PVP, albeit a bit niche, but it is basically useless for PVE. An idea for this is to play further into True Sight and make it a little bit more skill-based and allow you more tools to actually Actually play around it, which is that you'll gain true sight or the ability to wall hack targets whenever you have void invisibility. Now, at face value, that might seem a little bit strong, but I think we could reduce the overall range of true sight from, I think it's like 40 meters right now, closer to 20 meters. So you still have to be somewhat close to your targets in order to see them, but it allows you to have it up way more often. Another idea is to allow smoke bombs to stun overload champions or taking this a completely different direction. What if making allies invisible improved your handling, reload speed, and accuracy, something akin to bottom Tree Nightstalker, which we sort of lost when we got the Void 3.0 reworks. In my opinion, of everything on this list, I believe that the Oath Keepers are the worst exotic armor piece in Destiny 2. They're pointless to good players, except for extremely niche setups that can often be mimicked with just good discipline and practice. Let me put it this way. As somebody who uses bows quite regularly, I have never had a need for the Oath Keepers. So, here's a rework for it. Keep it where it's at, allowing you to hold arrow charges indefinitely, but increase the movement speed, targeting, and flinch resistance when you're holding a fully drawn arrow, and the longer an arrow is held, the more damage it deals to things like bosses, champions, and guardians in their super. This immediately bakes into it a little bit more usefulness for the PvP side of things, but also giving it some kind of interesting applications for PvE. Vesper of Radius arguably shouldn't be on this list because it's easy enough to buff, just, you know, give it more class ability regen when near enemies or allow it to deal more damage with that shockwave but I have a pretty neat idea for it, so I'm gonna break my own rules here for a second. First of all, shout out to Eggnog again. Let this work with Phoenix Dive so I can drop a shockwave on top of an enemy. And secondly, what if we allowed all allies that pass through your Empowering Rift to receive Amplified? Not the full normal duration, but just enough to get you that speed boost. This would sort of play like Lucio from Overwatch where you can place this thing down and get your allies back into the fight or get Amplified for extremely cheaply, something that we've seen with Getaway Artists. Sanguine Alchemy. 
the poor man's boots at the assembler it was nerfed a long time ago because warlocks aren't supposed to be able to have wall hacks but the effect they got in return is almost useless like i mentioned boots at the assembler is just the better versions of the sanguine's alchemy sanguine's alchemy really feels like it's lost its place and that's a shame because they look really damn good so here's a complete and total change idea for this what if this exotic replaced your rift with a personal damage empowerment that grants you healing whenever you deal damage sort of like a life steal type effect pressing rift again cancels the effect while you have this empowerment you cannot recover rift energy if you didn't pick up on it the idea here is very similar to what we have with the ice fall mantles but the change to this is more along the lines of giving you a little bit of extra survivability but using your empowerment as a much more selfish option basically giving you a 15 second charge of light whenever you cast your rift and the healing that could come from this would need to be very very small maybe something like overall two to three percent whenever you deal damage just enough to keep you a little bit more alive but not enough that if you got into a gunfight within pvp you would just be guaranteed to win that fight and for our final exotic on this list prometheum spur besides the rift from super kills in my opinion this exotic often plays contrary to being able to use your rifts in a helpful manner i often find myself killing targets and going wait i need that rift please come over here so what if we completely change the functionality of this besides the thing about getting rifts whenever you're killing things with your super? What if the change to this was that whenever you cast your rift, it'll ignite all nearby scorched targets. This would allow you to set up for some damage combos and make it a little bit of an interesting risk reward option for both PVP and PVE. But hey, these are just my ideas. If you have an idea for an exotic that you think should be reworked, subscribe and leave it in the comments down below. We actually had somebody previously drop a comment and they ended up making Making it to like reddit and twitter and a whole bunch of other places and i love that i love to get these ideas front and center in front of bungie so hopefully we can get some of these exotics to be changed because i like using more stuff not less stuff hope you guys enjoyed bless your faces and deuces Dino!